and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to be taking a look at the differences between making changes using Quick Develop in Lightroom's library module versus using the Develop module. So, I think most of us are more familiar with the Develop module, so I'll go ahead and tap the D key and move over to there. What's important to know is that any changes that I make here are going to be absolute. So let's just make some quick changes here. I might want to, say, use my temperature slider and make this a bit more yellow. I might want to change exposure and also change my blacks here. And as I do that, I might also want to pull down the brightness and maybe add a little bit of clarity. All right, so let's say I've made the changes that I want to to this image. Actually, I think it's looking a little bit too yellow, so let's bring that temperature slider down a bit more. Okay, so now we've made the changes that I, that I want, and you can see down here in my film strip, I have multiple images that I want to apply those same changes to. Now, I have a variety of ways I can do this, right? I could click on the next image, and then I could simply click the previous button, and that would apply the same changes that were applied to the previous file. Or I could select multiple images at one time, and then with the image that has the changes applied, I could click on the sync button and tell it what I want to sync. So in this case, the white balance, maybe the basic tone, also the clarity down here. And I don't think I made any changes to color, so we can leave that off. But you could see I could be syncing any of the different attributes of any of the panels here. So we could synchronize, and now you can see that those same set of, of changes have been applied to the next file. Or we can even create a preset. And we would do that by just clicking on the plus icon here next to presets. We can save this into a specific folder if we want to. And then again, we just check all of those different sliders or all of the different changes that we've made. Let's give it a name. In this case, um, Correct Painted Hills. And click Create. Now, you might have made presets for other things, like for example, maybe taking your images to black and white or adding a sepia tone. There's all sorts of different reasons to create presets. But what I really wanted to show here is that no matter how you make your changes, so let's go ahead and select the next two files and we'll actually apply this preset. No matter how you make these changes to your images using the develop module, those values that you change are absolute. So, regardless of what image I select here, if we go and look over here in the basic panel, you'll notice that, for example, the exposure and the blacks and the clarity settings will be the same for each image. So we've got exposure plus 75, blacks 29. Let's go to the next image. Same thing, plus 75, plus 29. Again, the next image, plus 75, plus 29. So you can see any change you make and then synchronize, whether you're synchronizing using the previous button, the synchronize button, or if you create a preset, those changes are going to be absolute. All right. What happens then if we go back to the library module and use Quick Develop to make changes? Well, let's take a look at the next set of images. You can see here that each one of these images is very unique. They're shot under very different lighting conditions. And in fact, let's even jump back to develop for one moment to point out that each one has its own set of unique corrections applied to it. So in this case, for example, We've changed the exposure to negative 33, and we've added a clarity of 80. And if we move to the next image, you can see that this exposure value has been changed to a different nu numeric value, and the clarity has also been changed. So each one of these images has been individually corrected. But they all look a little bit dark to me. So wouldn't it be nice if there was a way to simply select a range of images and then add like a third of a stop or a stop to each one of those images, regardless of their numeric values that, that is their starting point? Well, that's what you can do with Quick Develop. So we go back to Grid, and I will select these five images that all look a little bit underexposed to me, even though they've all had custom adjustments made to them. And I'll come over here in Quick Develop to Exposure, and you can see that there's two icons. Well, there's four icons, but 
The icons on the left will obviously take the exposure down. The icons on the right take the exposure up. And you can see with that tooltip that it's either going to increase exposure by one stop, that's the larger jump that has the two arrows, or by just a third of a stop. So if I think I want to make a large adjustment, then I'll go ahead and click to increase the exposure one stop. And that is a relative adjustment, so that each one of these images is going to have a full stop of exposure added to it. And that's true of any of these settings. So for example, if I wanted to increase the blacks or the fill lights or even clarity or vibrance, all of the values here in the quick develop module are going to be relative. So just before I wrap up, I want to show you, because a lot of folks ask me what values these buttons have attributed to them. So I'm just going to jump over here to my blog, where you can see what I've done is I just did a quick search, and I typed in Quick Develop. And then I was able to find this earlier blog post that I'd done that will actually list out all of the values for all of those buttons in Quick Develop. So if you find that to be helpful, if you want to know those values, or you know maybe you don't care, maybe you just simply want to click and, and see what your image looks like after the click. So it's up to you, but just know that that information is published um, on my blog. And my blog is, um, just very quickly, it's blogs.adobe.com slash jcost. That's J-K-O-S-T. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for joining me on this episode of The Complete Picture. I hope now it's much clearer what the difference is between making your absolute changes in Lightroom's develop module, regardless if you're, you know, you're making a change to one image, or you're syncing changes, or you're applying the previous change, or you're making presets. All of those techniques are all going to store the absolute value that you change, so exactly what numeric value that slider is set to, as opposed to making those changes in Quick Develop in the library module of Lightroom, which are always going to be relative changes. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you again next time on The Complete Picture.